My name is Troy Eid. I've got a last name. It's just three letters. Uh, it's an Arabic word. It means party or celebration in Arabic. So I'm the party guy, so that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, I have been advised about the scheduling here, and I respect your time. So there are lots of things that we could talk about. But I'm going to talk very generally about protecting Colorado and some of the issues that, as a U.S. attorney, I dealt with and that we're dealing with now, today. My message to you is going to be that we have some of the most interesting criminal justice matters in the entire world, frankly, are in this state. And my experience has been that many people are not introduced to them and they don't necessarily have a sense of that. So we'll talk a bit about that, our geography, the unique quality of life that brought all of you here at one point or another, that brought us all here, is also responsible for the legal activity that, that is interesting and, and, and is unique in many respects. My other message to you is that we are just about the most underserved state in the country as far as criminal justice services go, in terms of what the federal government does. The feds have a huge presence in the state, and the resources that we get back on our tax dollars are very limited, and I'll talk a little bit about that. We increasingly face international kinds of issues here, but we just don't get the resources back from Washington, and it's a, tr it's a tremendous, tremendous structural issue that Colorado has. I'm going to also talk very briefly, because I've been asked to do so, about Guantanamo. Now, I tend to think Jay Leno was right about Guantanamo. If we really want to shut it down, we should make it a Pontiac dealership. And that would be the end of it. All right, I'm going to do this clicker and see if I can click. So what am I aiming my clicker at? Right here? Down? All right, help me click. I'm going to start doing Star Trek any minute here. What if, OK, there we go. You, you can click. Are you going to click for me? All right, thank you, Miriam. Miriam. Uh, I want to thank Miriam Stark for being here, my, my wonderful assistant and my colleague uh, who came over to help me today. So just let's go through some slides and keep going slowly and I'll tell you when to stop in the interest of time. All right, what's the U.S. Attorney? My only message is, what the heck's the U.S. Attorney? Anybody know? This is the chief federal criminal prosecutor. Every state gets at least one. Some states have several in different districts. They're in the same districts as the federal judges are. They were created by the same law that created the federal court system. And that law is uh, that law is the Judiciary Act of 1789. And it said basically everybody's got a chief federal prosecutor nominated by the president, confirmed by a vote of the US Senate. So it's the same process as for a federal judge. You also represent the US every time the government's a party on a civil case. So if you're defending, say, a doctor in the VA who, who's alleged to have committed malpractice. The U.S. Attorney does that. Or maybe you're doing an affirmative action. Maybe somebody polluted out at Rocky Flats, it's alleged, and you're going to go recover money back to get that for the taxpayers. You play that civil role as well as the criminal role. Next slide. We've had a number of interesting characters as U.S. Attorneys in this state. My, my presidential predecessor was John Southers, who's now the state attorney general. But we had some that are particularly interesting. I put three up here to give you some context. Sam Brown is remarkable because he's the first one we got a photo of. But I'll take you back to, to the old days. It was Abraham Lincoln who picked the first U.S. attorney for Colorado, because that's when we first had one in 1861. I was the 40th one to be presidentially appointed. You go back to Sam Brown, he had a very interesting life. He had a dual role as U.S. Attorney. On the one hand, he was the chief federal prosecutor, and in that role, he was responsible for taking care of the Indian tribes back in that day. When he was appointed, the Ute nations of Colorado had everything west of the Continental Divide was Ute territory and was designated in perpetuity for the Ute people. Uh, he would spend his time, when he was not U.S. Attorney, as head of the 1st Colorado Cavalry, so he was fighting the Indians on the weekends, and he was prosecuting crimes against them during the week. But the role has changed over time. Uh, as U.S. Attorney, and now as a private attorney, I'm special counsel to the Ute Mountain Ute Indian tribe. So one of those tribes that's left, I now represent outside as their, their lawyer and outside practice. And so we continue, and I'll talk about the legacy that, that U.S. attorneys have in Indian country is huge, where we are the, the local DA for crimes committed in Indian reservations. So in a big state like Colorado, one-fifth of all the crimes that our U.S. Attorney's Office enforces 
140 people covering the state. One fifth are crimes occurring on two Indian reservations that are more than a seven hour drive from Denver, Youth Mountain and Southern Hughes. You have to go to Alaska to find a group of native people who are farther away from a federal courthouse than they are in Durango, Ignacio, Toya. Does everybody know that? Are you happy about the fact that we've got one federal courthouse in Denver? Do you realize that there are only six states left in the whole US, only six, that have a courthouse in only one state and judges permanently stationed in only one city in the state, only six. There are states like Rhode Island,